Okay, welcome to the deep dive. Today we're really getting into some research that's uh, creating quite a bit of excitement. It's about the fight against HIV, specifically that really, really tough goal of finding a cure. We're looking at an article about work coming out of the Peter Doherty Institute for Infection and Immunity down in Melbourne. That's right. And this isn't just, you know, tweaking current treatments. The research suggests they might have found a way to tackle one of the absolute biggest hurdles, biologically speaking, to actually clearing HIV from the body. Exactly. So our plan today is to unpack this. Mm. What's the problem they're solving? What's this new approach? And, you know, what could it really mean down the line? Because the fundamental issue with HIV, the thing that's made it so incredibly difficult, is its ability to just hide. It really is the defining challenge. It's why a cure has been so elusive for so long. So let's start there. Why is it so hard? We have amazing drugs now, right? People mm -hmm. live long lives with HIV. But stopping treatment, that's still not really an option because the mm -hmm. virus is still there. Mm -hmm. The core biological problem and what this research zeroes in on is the HIV viral reservoir. See, after the initial infection, HIV doesn't just stay in the bloodstream. It gets inside certain immune cells, these resting CD4 plus T cells, key players in your immune system. And once it's inside, it integrates its own genetic code into the cell's DNA and basically goes to sleep. It enters a latent state. Latent, okay, so like dormant. Hiding inside the very cells that are supposed to be defending the body. Precisely, and it's incredibly sneaky about it. While it's latent, the cell looks totally normal from the outside. The immune system doesn't see it. There's no active virus being made, so no alarm bells ringing. And here's the crucial part. Our current drugs, the antiretrovirals that work so well, they attack the virus when it's actively copying itself. They stop that replication cycle. But they can't do anything about the virus when it's just sitting there, hidden in the DNA, not doing anything. Oh, ah. Okay, so the meds are great at stopping the fire from spreading, stopping new copies, but they can't find those hidden embers, the integrated virus DNA inside those resting cells. That's a really good way to put it. Those embers, that reservoir, it's stable. It persists for years, potentially decades. If someone stops their medication, those latent viruses can wake up, start replicating, and the active infection comes right back, usually very quickly. So getting rid of that reservoir, that's basically the holy grail for a functional cure, getting the virus gone so treatment isn't needed anymore. And that's where this new research from Melbourne comes in. It sounds like they might have found a way to actually force that hidden virus out of the shadows, specifically in those resting T cells. That's the exciting development, yeah. yeah. The challenge was always kind of twofold. One, find the cells, and two, get something into those specific cells to wake up the virus or, or somehow reveal it. What this team did was develop a new way to deliver mRNA messenger RNA directly into those resting CD4 plus T cells, which are notoriously hard to get things into. Okay, mRNA delivery. That sounds familiar, like with some of the COVID vaccines, right? But I remember the article quoting one of the researchers, Dr. Paula Saval, saying that getting things like standard lipid nanoparticles, LNPs, into these specific cells was thought to be, like, impossible before. That really stood out. Absolutely. Standard LNPs, the delivery vehicles, they work well for lots of cell types, but not these resting T cells. They just didn't take them up effectively. So the Doherty team had to engineer a completely new type of LNP. They tweaked its structure, maybe its surface, to make it compatible with these specific cells. And once that special LNP gets the mRNA inside, well, the mRNA is like a temporary instruction kit for the cell. Got it. New delivery truck gets the instructions inside the hard to reach cell. So what are the instructions? How does the mRNA make the hidden virus reveal itself? This is the really clever bit. The mRNA doesn't actually tell the virus to wake up and start replicating like crazy. Instead, it instructs the cell to produce certain signals, certain markers on its surface. These markers basically act like a flag saying, hey, something's not right inside here, specifically pointing to the presence of that hidden viral DNA. Ah, OK. So it's not flipping the main power switch for the virus. It's more like telling the cell to turn on a warning light outside like dormant HIV inside. Exactly. It makes the cell visible. Suddenly it's not hiding anymore. And you can tell how big a deal this was from the researchers' reactions in the article. Dr. Saval said the first results seemed almost too good to be true. She described the difference compared to what they expected or had seen before as night and day. Yeah, I remember that. She apparently had a colleague repeat the experiment immediately because the results were just so striking in the lab samples. And they've done it many times since then, getting the same result. That kind of, whoa, wait a minute moment, followed by solid repetition, that usually means something significant. It really does. When you see an effect that's just dramatically better than anything tried before, you double and triple check. 
and they did. So, okay, let's connect the dots. If you can make these hidden infected cells visible, make them take off the invisibility cloak. What does that open up? What could happen next? Well, that is the key potential step towards a cure this research unlocks. If these reservoir cells are revealed, they become potential targets. Targets for what? Maybe the body's own immune system. If the immune system can now see these flagged cells, maybe it can be encouraged or trained to attack and clear them. Or perhaps making them visible makes them vulnerable to drugs, mm -hmm. maybe existing ones, maybe new ones that couldn't touch them when they were hidden. So it shifts the whole game plan from just keeping the active virus down to potentially enabling the immune system or drugs to actually eliminate the source, those hidden reservoir cells. Precisely. You're going after the root cause of why HIV persists. And Dr. Savol's quote on this really hits home. She said something like, in her whole career working on HIV cures, they've never seen anything close to as good as what we are seeing in terms of how well we are able to reveal this virus. Hearing that from someone deep in the field really tells you how significant this step of revealing is considered. That is, wow, that's genuinely exciting potential. But okay, reality check time. Where is this research right now, practically speaking? Right, so this specific study, the one published in Nature Communications, it was done in vitro, in the lab. They used blood cells donated by people living with HIV, cells containing that hidden reservoir. They applied their new LNP mRNA system to these cells in lab dishes and showed, yes, it works really well revealing the virus in those isolated cells. Okay, so a major proof of concept at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. In a dish, what needs to happen to see if this could actually work in a person? What's the road ahead? Yeah, the article is quite clear. This is step one, a really important step one, but still step one. The immediate next big question is, if you reveal the virus inside a whole living organism, does the body actually manage to clear those revealed cells? So that means moving from lab dishes to uh, more complex systems. Animal studies are usually next. They'll need to see if this LNP mRNA approach is safe and effective in vivo inside living animal model. And critically, does revealing the virus in those animals lead to the immune system or maybe other treatments actually getting rid of those cells. And animal studies for HIV, that comes with its own set of difficulties, doesn't it? It does. Finding animal models that perfectly mimic human HIV infection and the human immune system is tough. Yeah. Things that work in, say, monkey models don't always translate perfectly to humans. Uh -huh. So those studies are vital. But even success, there isn't a guarantee. If the animal studies look good, showing safety and showing that revealing the cells leads to clearance, then you start thinking about the possibility of human trials. And the timeline for all that. The article seemed pretty cautious. Very cautious, and rightly so. Dr. Saval pointed out, and it's true for all medical research, that many promising lab findings just don't make it through the whole pipeline to become actual treatments. Hurdles pop up safety issues. Maybe it's not as effective in a whole complex body, cost, you name it. And even if everything goes perfectly from here, the article suggests it would likely be years of more safety testing, regulatory approvals, all that, before any human trials could even start. Okay, so potentially paradigm shifting progress on a, a core problem, but definitely still in the early innings, a long way to go. Exactly. It tackles a huge barrier, the hiding, but doesn't solve the next problem, which is the actual elimination just yet. It enables that possibility. Right. So let's bring this home for you, the listener. Why should you care about this specific piece of research? Maybe you're just interested in science or health news. Well, I think first off, it's just a great example of how science works. You know, this persistent incremental progress against really tough challenges. HIV has been this huge global health issue. And seeing researchers figure out ways around its trickiest defenses, like this hiding mechanism, it's... Uh, it's genuinely hopeful. It shows the long game paying off. And it also highlights some cutting edge technology that goes beyond just HIV, right? Absolutely. This work really showcases advances in like targeted drug delivery. These new kinds of LNPs, the ability to use mRNA to give very specific instructions only to certain cells, that kind of precision delivery, that has massive implications for tr treating all sorts of things, potentially cancers, genetic diseases, you name it. Learning how to talk to specific cells is huge. And then for HIV specifically? For HIV, it's laser focused on the biggest roadblock to a cure, mm -hmm. that stubborn viral reservoir. Finding a way to reliably expose that hidden virus, that's been the dream. This research provides a potential how, a tool to finally address that core problem. It's a critical piece needed for any strategy aiming for a cure, not just lifelong management. Okay, so let's quickly recap this deep dive then. We looked at the core challenge for an HIV cure the virus hiding out and resting immune cells invisible to drugs and the immune system. 
Then we explored this really promising breakthrough from the Peter Doherty Institute using specially designed nanoparticles and mRNA to successfully force these hidden cells to reveal themselves in lab samples. A big step, something thought impossible before. But it's still early days. While the lab results are exciting, it needs years more work animal studies, safety testing, to see if this can actually lead to clearing the virus in people and potentially offer a functional cure. Right. And as you think about this research, this idea of making the hidden virus visible, here's something to consider. Let's say this method works perfectly in humans. We can reveal every single latently infected cell. What happens next? What are the other major scientific hurdles we'd still face to get to a full cure? I mean, how do you actually guarantee that the immune system or some other therapy finds and eliminates every single one of those newly visible cells across the entire body? And how do you ensure no stray virus starts the infection cycle all over again? It just highlights that even solving one huge problem like revealing the virus is just one part of a much bigger, more complex puzzle. Definitely food for thought. A lot more science needed on that path. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive.